Hi, this is Don Nelson, editor of the Additive Report and host of the Additive Manufacturing Minute. I am here at Rapid and TCT 2022, and I am with Zach DiVincenzo. He's the president of Juggerbot 3D, which is a builder of filament and pellet style printers. And we're going to talk a little bit today about some of the differences and similarities between these two styles of printing. So, Zach, I think the best thing to do would be just give us an overview of what pellet 3D printing is and what filament style. Is. Sure. Yeah. So, filament style is going to start at the the actual medium. It's going to be the material itself is in a filament or a strand like it's going to be taken from pellets and extruded into a filament strand and spooled onto one kilogram to maybe 20 kilogram spools. And then that's going to be put into a 3D printer that's going to be de-spooled and kind of extruded similar to like MIG welding. All right? It's going to be extruded through railroad rollers in a pinch format um, and extruded through a really small heating apparatus. So on pellet extrusion, you're going to start as pellets. All right? So it's already one step removed. Um, so it's going to be a little bit cheaper, it's going to be a little bit more optimal to process because you're going to want to go through one less heating, uh, heat history. And you're going to extrude pellets the same way injection molding has been doing for decades. Right. Right. Now, from what I understand, uh, filaments are made from pellets. pellets. Yes. So what does that do to the filament? I mean, yeah, so when you extrude down to filament, you, you went through a heat history. It's going to degrade that material a little bit. Is it amazingly noticeable? Probably not. Most of the people are not going to notice where they're going to extrude filament and say, I see problems, that's because of extruding it down to filament. But it's just something to be known. If you're in the aerospace industry, and you're trying to qualify material, you're going to want the purest material. You're going to want strength. You're going to want performance. And knowing that pellet already provides that because it hasn't put through that process, it has a little bit of an advantage. So does that mean that uh, filament is easier to work with? It is easier since it's already in strand and you have the ability to extrude it um, in a linear format. So the way these printers, these machines process this, um, all you're doing, just like a, like a, a MIG welder, if you're to automate a, a system, is you're just going to despool that and extrude it through that heater. Um, and it's, it's easier to control. You can retract, meaning that if you were to be printing and you picked up your head and moved to another location, uh, you could retract a little bit to prevent any oozing or drooling of that material. In pellet printing, the screen only turns one way. There's no retraction. I can't go back. So theoretically, from a control standpoint, it's a little easier on filling the screen. Now, is, uh, are the materials the same? Like, is every, every type of pellet that's available could be available in filament too? You would think that, but no. So okay. it's expensive. So you have all the companies in the world, BASF, Dow, DuPont, uh, Cabestro, DSM, they have a Rolodex of maybe 5,000, 10,000 grades of materials each. They didn't decide to take all of them to make them the filament. They basically selected off of what the market needs were. So let's say if there was over 10,000 plus pellets available in the market today, there's probably only 300 filament offered to them. And a lot of those filament are just the same material as the because yeah. the color concentrate kind of designates it as another material. Now, can both of these operations, filament and pellet, be done on the same machine? It could be. You could have a system that has a pellet system and a dryer system. The way they extrude are different. The way they are dried are different. But a piece of equipment could have both, both on there. So it gives you the benefit of having high-resolution parts to low-resolution parts. Videos. Last question. How do you choose which one to use? It's pretty simple. Um, so, as I'm evaluating a part, I'm looking at the feature wall. I'm looking at the small resolution, the thinnest wall. And as I'm looking at a part, if I'm trying to do part replication, I'm taking an injection molding part and then printing it, nine times out of ten, it's going to be filled. All right, smaller wall, smaller beads. When you're doing large, three foot, four foot parts, big wall thickness, something that could be machined, perfect for that. Well, thanks, Zach. And thanks to our audience for tuning in. This is Don Nelson. I'll see you next time.